Hey everyone, sorry for the delay from last week. There wasn't a video, and it's because I was dealing with some medical issues, and I am fine now. So to make up for it, we're going to do an extra long episode drawing the cult iconic horror character, Vampirella. So starting off with this pose, you really want to pay attention to the curve of your figure. And what I do is I typically try to figure out where I want the head and then draw a curved line that uh, gives an action line from that point. And try not to have things too vertically or uh, too parallel. Uh, change up the shoulder, make it a little more uh, tilted. Uh, it just makes the image a little more interesting to look at and the figure a little more lifelike. And unfortunately, I didn't get a ton of the penciling stage uh, documented just because I was an idiot about working the phone. So now, going with the inking stage, there was a lot of fine line work, and I wasn't feeling that confident in using the brush uh, to get that, so I went with the quill instead. And I absolutely love quill inking. It's uh, probably my favorite, even though it is a bit time consuming. But you can get so much fine detail, and if you're careful enough, you can get a whole variety of thick lines in there as well, depending on the nib that you use. And as I'm going through being mindful of everything, uh, trying to make sure that I'm getting the textures that I want, uh, in particular, Vampirella shows a lot of skin, so you don't want to have too many, uh, on an athletic figure like hers, you don't want to have too many folds or wrinkles or anything like that, and not a lot of rendering in general. Uh, one of Jim Lee's rules that I try to follow is that the black lines you're drawing really are only the shadow lines, and so I try to keep with that, like adding some muscles to her abdomen. As you get more adept with your inking, you can go into longer strokes, uh, more curved lines, and in particular with a very alluring figure like Vampirella, that is important to get right. And I was pretty nervous about drawing this piece. Uh, I typically draw a lot of monsters or uh, armored characters or, you know, male superheroes. But it's very important as an artist to step outside of your comfort zone and challenge yourself. And in particular, draw something that you're not comfortable with drawing, like another viewer uh, requested that after Halloween season is done. And I'm going to be doing a makeup drawing too for the uh, week that I missed. Uh, but that Halloween season is over to draw Iron Man Mark 42 from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And personally, I do not excel at the number of uh, like plated characters, detailed lines, or at least I don't feel I do, but I'm going to take it on because as artists we need to challenge ourselves. So now here's where I'm going in with the brush, adding in a lot of details to her hair, and filling out this tree here was an interesting challenge because it's mostly, uh, I added a lot of detail onto this tree, and if you don't do it just right, it can end up actually distracting from your main character because your eye will typically go to a busier area before a area of stark or minimal detail. And I was tending to notice that I was doing that when I would step away from the drawing and look at it. Uh, I'll tell you how I solved that. And to get that tree texture, it's a simple exercise of drawing a or uh, brushing on a thick to thin line and then drawing a parallel line next to that. Now for these rocks here that she's sitting on, I tried to go with a, a dry brush effect to fill in the uh, detailing, and overall I feel it was pretty successful. I'm going to refine that more in the future, but uh, if your brush is running low on ink, and before you reload, see if there is an area where you can uh, add in some dry brush. Now this was just to break it up a little bit more, uh, because if I had another competing tree with the same texture as the one on the left, it would just be a little too maddening for the eye to look at. So I went in painstakingly adding in as many parallel lines as I could. I didn't use a roller because I wanted the shapes to be a little more organic. And if you're 
uh, one thing I noticed about the microns, they tend to uh, drag a little bit, but the Copic multi-liners are, allow, uh, allow you to work a little bit faster. The ink comes out the pen quicker. So I used it for that. And uh, here as well, adding in some additional shading to the rocks to define that texture more, uh, because I really wanted to make it clear what she was sitting on. It wasn't beforehand. And adding in hatching just to give a gradation. Another interesting thing about this piece is that a friend of mine who is a professional comic artist, Blackie Shepard, Vampirella is one of his favorite characters, and he uh, is a master at drawing her, so I referenced some of his work, didn't copy, just looked at some of his work. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I like to go in with the white gel pens to fill in some additional detailing. In this case, I gave her hair a lot more texture and sheen. Obviously, Vampirella likes to use shampoo in my world. So now after flatting it, I start to go into the coloring phase and work from the background to the foreground and give the sky a little more depth. In the Batman video, I had a ton, I had a ton of clouds, but I didn't want to repeat myself, so it's going to be a clear night where the full moon is shining. And uh, just kind of guessing the point of the trees, uh, excuse me, where, where the light is. I obviously know the point of trees. And going in and using the brush tool, as per usual, I paint in light. And what I do is put my brush setting onto screen mode and just go in and fill up the brush at a minimum opacity of around 50%. And what this does will make your colors pop way more significantly than if you adjust uh, paint on directly because you're going to want a really dynamic image. And if you're just painting colors with the same values, then when it goes to print, I guess I am going to do a printed version of this piece soon, uh, it will just look far flatter than if you use this method. Trust me, it works. I learned through trial and error, so you don't have to. And working background to foreground, what it allows you to do is firmly cement your figure into the drawing. And for me, yes, this section is a little tedious because I just really want to get Vampirella looking cool. And she will, but there is a method to this. And another thing you can do is to make the background uh, pop just a little bit more where I'm adding the highlights on these uh, tree branches gives the background a bit more depth than just drawing uh, cartoony, uh, cartoony flat trees that, you know, you see kids draw where there aren't any branches uh, coming at you. And here I just darken the entire area. Uh, blending the blacks of the image a little more into the background just so it doesn't compete with Vampirella as much and I'm leaving the trees dark and that solves that problem I was mentioning earlier of having too much rendering on uh, on the background as opposed to a character in the foreground but when printed you will actually see a difference and going in here adding highlights to the rocks keeping in mind that they are a different, uh, different texture, of course, than the trees. So you need to be mindful of that as you work. And one of the things that I like to do is highlight the ridges and, okay, for ego's sake, make sure my name isn't lost. Now, I found a variety of brushes to play with, and what they can do is give your material, of course, a great deal of texture and save you a lot of work. I like to just go in and really rough up those rocks and it's going to make the smooth shading that we do on Vampirella really stand out and make her the centerpiece of the print, which of course is what she's supposed to be anyway. Okay, so I did a lot of experimenting and wasn't super happy with it, so I went in and just recorded how rendering the face. You'll get the same idea. and. One of the things I do when I start the face is I have to render in the eyes first 
to make sure that we've really captured them. Otherwise, you may have a nicely rendered face, but it just looks dark and creepy. Even if that's your goal, it looks too unnatural. So now I work forehead, cheeks, chin, and then I add an exclamation point uh, of highlights on her nose. It's actually a makeup technique from theater too, but it really helps pop it out and make it look lifelike. And I put a lot of work into her face and uh, because really that's where you're going to look. No matter what else you draw, the human eye is going to focus on the face and really read that. Even in inanimate objects or patterns in nature, we try to find human faces. So I added a blue highlight, same color as the moon, along the rest of her body. It helps not only, and this is kind of an interesting duality, it blends her into the background, yet also makes her pop. I don't exactly know how it works, but, well, it does. I'm not going to question it. So here I am adding more highlights uh, to, her, uh, to her face, and while you do want to be realistic, sometimes you can be a little bit fanciful with where you want things. And one of the things I admittedly do like about digital, even though I'm a traditional artist, is the magic undo button. Uh, when I'm a better traditional artist, I'll, I'll avoid using that, but until then, hey, baby steps, right? So adding in the sheen to her clothing, uh, depending on what material it is, I personally love rich red colors. Uh, they're my favorite to work with, so uh, that was a pleasure. And what's interesting was that I knew who Vampirella was, but... I'm going to give another shout out here. I didn't pay a lot of attention until uh, Comic Tropes did a wonderful video on the history of Vampirella. So I suggest you check that out uh, about her appeal, how you want to get into the character, etc. And uh, it, it was a really interesting uh, watch and made me start reading the titles. Of course, there's all kinds of ways you can render your drawing. I happen to prefer a little bit of a... Uh, like image 90s look, I guess is the best way you could call it. A little bit of that airbrushed effect, but what's popular nowadays is kind of the uh, either all digital painted look or like a cell shaded effect. And here I was just realized I made her face too dark, so just go and enlighten it. Again, I always paint with light. Uh, rarely do I add in shadow. Uh, and in that case, I just switch my brush back to normal and uh, paint the area that needs shadow. But overall, I enjoy painting with light more, uh, and that's why I make my flats super, super dark, uh, because if you've already got the darkest part of your image set up, then you really don't need to worry about uh, anything else. And uh, sorry, I'm not on camera this week, but uh, as we wrap this up, I'm going to uh, say that I'll be putting out a few more horror characters before I get back into the Spider-Man 4 and uh, general superhero stuff, as well as my own comics. Uh, I am doing Michael Myers, of course, uh, because he is my absolute favorite horror icon. And uh, I had interesting requests to do Blade and Morbius, and I will get to those too. It'll probably go a little bit into November, but... Uh, Halloween, in my opinion, is a state of mind. It's not actually a season. And I'm almost always in Halloween mode. If not in Christmas mode, I'm weird about the holidays. So I'll finish off this image uh, by adding an overall color grade to the scene. Uh, I really wanted the blues to pop because I knew it would make the red of her costume uh, pop out. And then over the line art, just going in and adding some highlights. Not too many. She's not like a showroom car. And uh, then what I'm going to add to finish off this piece is another uh, more medium blue highlight on the left side of her body. It just made the image feel a little more complete. And then a little bit of a haze uh, around her and... There she is, Vampirella. It's a piece that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm glad I did it. If you have any additional horror or characters you want to see drawn on the show, 
uh, please leave a comment below. If you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing. I am this close to 600 viewers, so hopefully that'll be a thing. And in the meantime, keep telling your stories.